What's happening guys and welcome back to part 17 of this top down Construct 3 RPG series. Now we've made some good progress and today we're going to be tackling that big one which is the inventory. So I might break this up into two videos but let's see how we go. If I see it's getting too long then we will break it up into two. Now the first thing is just that you guys know we, we, we stepped off last time we did the spike traps. Go and check that video out and that just gives a little bit more depth to our game itself. Uh, we still need to work on the animations which i'm going to do in one video along with other little bits such as collisions uh, making sure that the transitions are smooth and just a few uh, nitty gritties that i don't quite like um, that we want to make sure works so, you know we're going to make sure our manners work uh, that'll be a separate video with spells as well as getting the character to work here on the different events that take place i also thought that'd be pretty cool now i'm going to be tackling the inventory today so i'm going to be making quite a complex inventory system because RPG games in general, they carry weapons, potions, you know, materials. So we're going to make it fairly substantial, opposed to just, you know, a sword and a one single potion. Okay, so we're going to be making use of a number of things. Now, I've prepped the scene as always. That's to save time, as you guys know. I've gone ahead and added a new dictionary in my dictionary folder. And I've called this item properties. Okay, so go and create one of those as well. Then over onto my global layers, as you guys could remember the good old global layers where we did the HUD video. Go and watch that. I've gone ahead and added another layer. I've named this layer inventory. So I'm going to step you through exactly what you need to do. Name this inventory. Again, parallax is zero and zero. I set it to global and I made it invisible for now because I want to trigger this on the event. This is my simple inventory system and I've got two buttons to go with it as well. So this is just to scroll through. Now I can have multiple buttons for different materials, etc. But I've got a weapons tab and I've got a potions tab. Uh, those are the things that I'm going to be working with effectively in this game. All right. The only difference that I also did with this is I went ahead and created an instance variable of these two buttons by adding them to a simple family. All right. So inventory buttons, added a family, created a new instance variable, and I called it category. And that is all that I've done to start this progress off. So back to my stage, what I've also done is I've brought in the inventory layer without doing anything. It's a global, as you guys saw in the HUD video, go watch it. And if I click on it, it brings it up, okay? So if I go ahead and play this game, theoretically, if I push the button, um, okay, it's not gonna show like that because it's set to invisible, but I'll show you what that looks like. Then the HUD's going to appear and it will appear with where I am on the screen in terms of centered. So parallax zero, zero. Right, so over onto our main, I've gone and created, as you can see, an empty group, and that's gonna be where all our code goes in. I've also done one extra thing onto my player. I have gone and set a variable, a boolean. So I went onto my instance variables and I created inventory underscore active. This is to say that if the inventory is active, I'm going to want to do a few things like pause the game, maybe, or you know, show the HUD, obviously, in this case. So just go and add that to your player script so that we can trigger that. Then I've added the last three things, which is three constant variables, global variables, one being var world item quantity, the sort slot, which I'll show you now, and then the active category. So three simple, which is two of them are, are numbers, as you can see here, and the other is a string. And that is our prep. So I need you guys to go and do that. Pause the video here. Go ahead and prep your scene first, like I've done. Go and listen to what I've just said in, to the, in the beginning. And then when you're done, we'll start this phase. Okay, so I'll take it you're done. Right, so now we're going to do a number of things. So the first thing we want to do is on our player, we want to check and see if that variable is true. So I'm going to go player, I'm going to say check a balloon instance, I'm going to go my inventory, is it true? In fact, is it in other words active? And I want to trigger this only once to make sure that that doesn't spam itself. So let's go ahead and just add another condition. And we can just say system and I'm going to go once and this will bring up the trigger while true. Right, so trigger once and then I want to go ahead and do something. So the first thing I want to do is change this variable. So, because obviously I'm going to, the reason why I've got this category variable, just to explain to you, is I'm going to be going through different categories uh, based on my button. So, if I've got my global layer over here, I want swords to occupy all the swords in case I have 10 or 15 different swords. And then I'm going to quantity the swords. In other words, I'm going to have, you know, if it's the same sword picked up, show a quantity of two. So, as you can imagine, it's quite a bit of work that's going to, it's quite in depth. And then when I click on potions, I want it to open a clean slate of potions. So I don't want all swords to be mixed up with potions. Um, that's untidy. Uh, so that is why I'm going to be using a category to tell the inventory which one is currently on. That's the first step. Show the inventory and then display this to show different things based on the category we select. Okay. 
So back over to my main, and now I'm gonna go and set the var. So I'm gonna go set system, I'm gonna go set a value, and I'm gonna say this var category, I'm gonna set mine to weapons. Right, so weapons. Now, very important, just remember whatever you named your categories, just to be very clear, if I go back to this family that I created in the prep, I've got the category on each one, right? Weapons, capital W, guys. Make sure that your names are spelled correctly. Weapons, and I've got potions with a capital. Okay, so yeah, I'm setting it on, on uh, in terms of my active screen, okay? So coming back to our, our sheet here. Then I'm gonna set that this, this uh, layout to be uh, visible. So over onto my layer, just to explain to you, you've got your inventory. I have gone and unchecked this layer, this inventory here. I've gone and unchecked it. I said it normally is checked by saying that display it, but I've made it invisible. I wanna show it, in other words, when I trigger this, this trigger now. So yeah, we're gonna go basically say set the layer. So we're gonna go system, I'm gonna go layer. And we're going to go set layer, and in this case, it's going to be visible. So we're going to go set layer visible, and we're going to select the layer. In my case, it's going to be the inventory layer. And I'm going to say set it to visible. Then we basically need to invert this to close it and then, you know, give it a trigger. So I'm going to copy this again. I'm going to paste this down. I'm going to set this to invisible. And then I'm going to go ahead and just delete this yet, because that's only for open that we want to set the main, the starting category to weapons. And then I'm going to invert this. And then from here, it's going to add a new event, add a new sub event. And then we're going to go on keyboard. So go back to keyboard. On key pressed. And I'm going to choose the I key for mine. You're welcome to use whatever key you feel or see fit. I'm going to say I. I'm going to drag this to the top because this is the most vital part. And then I'm going to toggle this boolean. So I'm going to go add player. Let's find our player and let's say toggle boolean and I'm going to toggle the inventory. Now with this basically we're saying on I every time I press it, toggle between true or false, trigger this once and open and close the inventory and set the main active category to weapons. And that is as simple as that. So this should now work. So if I go ahead and play this, if I press I, there's my inventory, which is awesome. If I press I again, it removes it. Okay, so that is the starting point of the inventory. What happens behind it, you probably see that the guy will probably be able to move, okay? So we're probably gonna want to maybe change this. I know some RPGs actually enjoy that with this actual current movement. We might bring in an overlay here. We do have a shadow overlay, just to be clear. So if I go back to the game, and we do enable the shadow overlay, and we say initially visible, we click play. Remember, this is what we originally had. So now this will come above. So that probably looks a little bit better um, than, what we, than what it's showing prior to that. So that's what we're going to want, obviously drag, drop, and so forth, so we'll get stuck into the rest. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to uncheck that for now, because I don't want to show the shadow just yet, while we work. Right, so now that we've got our trigger-based system, we can all obviously start the layouts in terms of the function layouts, and that's going to manage all the different types of layouts. But before we do that, let's just quickly tackle the categories. So, and now inventory, I want to add another, let's, do we do this in a new group? Okay, let's add another sub uh, subgroup. Let's add a subgroup and let's call this inventory, inventory, inventory uh, buttons. Okay, that's how we keep everything tidy. So yeah, we've got the inventory buttons. Um, these, we might have to, these are probably the main. So let's call this, okay, we'll put that in its own group, but this is probably going to be better because I'm going to have events under here. So over here, we want to add a new sub event and we're going to go uh, our player and we're going to go, we're going to check if that boolean is active. So let's go um, compare boolean and let's go if the inventory active, click done, then we want to trigger a few things. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger so it looks a little bit spaced. And then we want to basically enable twofold. Looking at what we have, we're going to need to use the mouse. So if I press I, I need to be able to toggle these two. That's what we're going to do now, these two buttons. But you'll notice that I also do have, I do have the I managing the, um, the current animation for the melee. So I'm going to probably use, I probably will want to use left here and then I want to disable this is what we're probably going to want to do 
um, sort of our end, you could say, result, uh, theoretically. So let's do the following. Let's go ahead and close this down. We'll see how it goes. It'll, it'll trigger both for now, which is fine. So I'm going to go on the player. I'm going to use that. I'm going to add a sub-event. Add sub-event. And then I'm going to say a mouse. Type in mouse. And I'm going to go on left click. Uh, on left click. Where is my on left? On click. Uh, left click. Yeah, which is fine. Uh, we could even use a double click. No, let's just use left click. And then when I put this basically on the family, sorry. So I'm gonna go mouse this down over an object. Cause it's over an object, no, on click, object clicked, here we go. So let's go left click, on click, and let's choose the family. So let's go and choose our inventory buttons. Just remember you need to make those buttons as I mentioned. All right, click done. Then I wanna go and set the, the, the global value that you see here, this value. So I'm gonna go systems, and let's go set the global, which is the, and that is a string based so let's set value and then we're going to go with um, active category and yeah we're going to basically do the following we're going to go buttons which is our family button so we're going to go um, inventory inventory buttons and i want to name it to dot and i'm going to pass that variable so yeah we're going to go category now remember in my i've got a, a instance variable that is sitting on the family itself okay so we can go and set this to the leading one what you whichever one we, we touch right so that should change that this will be the swapping if you want to make sense the next thing we need to do is we need to play the animation so let's go and add another sub event add a sub event sub event now just to be clear that now you're probably asking what animations so if i go over these buttons and i double check them I've gone ahead and done two things. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. This is probably vital. So let's go over to our buttons. If I double check my buttons, I've got an ID here, an animation frame, and another one. The one is got a slightly, you can see it slightly is extended. That's tell me that I'm on that tab. You could probably gray it out if you want, or whatever you're going to do in your animation. And I've got two frames in it. So I've called the one ID one and the other one ID two. Okay, so you will have to do the same here because I'm going to refer to these two references. Let's go ahead and then refer them so we're going to go yeah and we're going to go um if it's active we're going to add another sub event we're going to go our families let's do this inventory families and then we're going to want to kind of basically compare so we're going to go if the category uh let's go to our thing here uh, let's compare instance if category is equal to this global variable which is our var um var this category over here then go ahead um, and play that animation but we might need a, another condition so let's just go uh, on this event I'm just reading it just to make that it makes sense so then we're going to go family buttons right so let's go inventory of buttons and then we're going to set the animation to play uh, and this will be id one right so id one underscore one the first one okay and then uh, and that is obviously only if id2 is playing so we want to make sure we have another uh, another condition add another condition and then we're going to go enemy buttons uh, which is the sorry the not enemy buttons the inventory buttons and then we're going to go is animation playing we're going to check that as well so let's go is playing uh, and then we're going to go here id underscore two so id underscore two and let's click that now that should then play the other animation if that one is not playing we obviously still need to set that this animation does play okay so that's great then we need to add another sub event add a sub event and we need to go buttons uh, our inventory buttons and then we're going to go if that bar is not playing in fact we could just do the opposite let's just take this entire let's just take this entire function copy it and paste it over here and then just invert it for me right and change this id to play one so we're going to do the opposite now so that we can play the opposite frame and then go ahead and play this to two id two and that should give our buttons what we need in terms of it's um it's uh it's different um 
different different animations on the buttons. But before we go ahead and play, my we say that active, then go start playing animation one, but that is my non-active. My active is in fact two. So these two might have to be swapped around, uh, theoretically. Uh, let's just test it quickly. Let's see what that looks like. Um, so press I, yeah, as I thought. Weapons should have been active, so I can't click on weapons, but if I click on potions, you'll, uh, that'll bring up, so this should have been the other way around. So let's just unchange that. I'm gonna say, edit this, change this to function one, click done, and then play the animation two in my case, and then this is two, and play the animation one. Okay, you can just swap it around if you need to. So if I go ahead and play that now, and I press I, and there it is. So currently I've got my weapons side of this active, and if I click on my potions, that'll be my potions. So we finally got those tabs working beautifully the way that we intended. Right, so that's a good start. I know it's a lot of code for just two little things, but these are the fundamentals that we're gonna need because in these categories per se, we are going to then load the inventory items. Uh, so this is quite a vital thing moving forward. All right, guys, so I'm gonna break this down into three steps. That's going to be it for this video one. And I will throw these out daily, obviously, just so that we don't drag it too out with regards to video two and video three, and that should then conclude our inventory. But guys, as always, if you're new here, hit that subscribe and little thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.